What's going on, everybody? Uh, this is Bobby G. Back again with another book review. Um, this particular book, um, I just finished. And it is by Oz Guinness, who is also the author of a book called Renaissance. This particular book is called Fool's Talk, Recovering the art of Christian persuasion and two things that um, come out to me right away in this book one is that he talks about how it is foolish for people of faith Christians or Messianic Jews like myself to automatically assume that everybody we talk to and everybody we come into contact with is open to what we have to say with regards to the truth, whereas the reality is nothing could be further from the truth. Not everybody is open to what we have to say, he argues off. And this is a theme that continues throughout the entire book. And to that point, he talks about uh, the art of persuasion, which happens uh, in the Old Testament. He gives a particular example with regard to Nathan the prophet, uh, with regards to... Uh, the King David, because King David had just sinned with Bathsheba and had sent Uriah to his death and all of that. And what ended up happening is God sent Nathan to uh, essentially rebuke David, but instead of going at David directly, what Nathan did was he uh, came up with a, a story, if you will, that fit within um, the Torah or the books of Moses, what was permissible, what was not permissible according to Torah, and what had happened. And he basically said... Talked about this rich man who had so many sheep and so on. And then you had this poor man who had one uh, ULM, E-W-E, ULM. Uh, that was like a family member to him and he took care, great care of it. And then one day the rich man has a guest. Well, instead of taking from his own sheep, he goes to the poor man, takes his sheep and kills it to give it to his guest. To which David is furious at that point and said, this man deserves to die. Not only that, he deserves to pay back four times what he did to this poor man. And David looked at him and said, that man that I just talked about is you. And basically, he basically said that David had eventually con condemned himself because basically it's like, I gave you the throne of the kingdom. You know, I took you from your father's sons. I took you from the sheepfold and I made you rule over my people Israel. And what do you do to repay me? You do this. You do what you did to Uriah and took his wife. And you did it secretly, but guess what? Now you got to pay for it. But the thing is, is that Nathan didn't start out that way. He started out with a story and it was kind of to circumvent or to kind of basically take away David's excuse because David eventually was like, I have sinned. And David knew he was wrong. David knew he was bogus for it. And the reason I bring those up is because that's kind of the, the overarching theme is that the reality is because of the fact that not everybody is going to be open to what we have to say as people of faith, we have to figure out, okay, this isn't going to work right away. And I'm not talking about doing some kind of bait and switch kind of situation or strategy. But what I am talking about is that it is better to try and one, meet someone where they're at, but also try to assess where people are at and reach them in that manner rather than just going at them directly with the gospel. Not that the preaching the gospel isn't necessary. But again, you have to know your audience. It's, it's kind of, I think, what um, Oz is getting at. Especially when you have the images of the court jesters on the front of the book. Because the court jester was the one who could make fun of the king. Could basically tell the king stories uh, that could speak to the truth of when the king was wrong. Or queen, depending on what country you lived in. And it basically speak truth to power without getting busted for it sometimes. Unless the king uh, got wise. There's also um, a particular quote in here from the book that I want to quote. And it says, Only a wimp, afraid to think for himself, could believe an answer shared by the crowd, let alone submit to, to living by it. The reason I bring this quote is up, there's a few different quotes, but this one stuck out to me. Because it's like, only those who follow the mob, uh, you know, are wimps. Why? Because you're following the mob instead of, 
you know, thinking for yourself. And that that's another th thing with fool's talk is that fool's talk, rather than just giving people answers or just giving people outright directions, is fool's talk was meant to get people to think. That's what you have with the prophets throughout. And you see it with Jesus. Jesus talked about the vineyard where, you know, you had this landowner who sent out servants to tend the vineyard. And then when he sent, when he leased it out, and then when the people who took care of the vineyard saw the servants of the landowner come, they beat one, stoned one, killed another, and sent the other one away. And the landowner kept doing this and kept doing this, and then finally the landowner in the parable that Jesus talks about goes, they will respect my son. But when the vineyard dresser saw it, they said, well, here's the heir, you know, let's kill him and the vineyard will be ours. Now, what did the landowner do? Did he take it away and give it to others? No, he went back and destroyed the owners. But then Jesus said, have you not understood what is written in the prophets? The stone that the builders have rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous on our eyes. And it says later on that the uh, Sanhedrin of the Pharisees and the scribes, they didn't say anything because he they perceived that what he had done was spoken this parable against them. But it was a way to reach the people the common folks, so that they could understand it. Um, but it was also a way of circumventing power without getting in trouble or at least trying to make people understand it. All I'm saying with these stories and these examples and these pit, uh, passages of scripture is that the reality is the current world that we live in, the current country that we live in, is a post-fact uh, nation, it seems. At least from what I'm seeing on the news and from what I'm reading in the papers. That being said, you know, he talks about, as Guinness does, is that we are a very post-Christian society in Western society, not just in the U.S., but in Europe as well. But he says that the uh, argument or the difference between the classic atheists, such as uh, Albert Camus and Friedrich Nietzsche, and Bertrand Russell is at least they were honest and consistent with their atheistic beliefs, whereas the new atheists like Richard Dawkins and others just kind of repeat some mantras instead of owning up to the frightening realities that atheism and other beliefs eventually go to. That being said, you know, I think it is time for us, you know, more than ever, especially those of us who are part of the arts community, uh, whether it's music, whether it's paintings, whether it's movies, um, whether it's graffiti, which I intend to do a little bit myself, um, or whether it's book writing, you know, we need to start writing stories and we need to start painting pictures and we need to start speaking words that reach the people who may be close to what we have to say, but will nonetheless get them to think and kind of get their gears turning in their minds. Um, this is where I think as a church we need to be. I think we need to invoke the principle of what Jesus said when he said to the disciples, Behold, I send you out as sheep amidst the wolves, and therefore be you wise as serpents, or shrewd as serpents, and innocent as doves. And I think that a principle uh, applies to our uh, fellow Christians in underground churches and other parts of the world, and I think that needs to apply to us now. Where it goes from here, I don't know, but we'll see. That's just my take on this book. Again, it's Fool's Talk, Recovering the Law, the Art of Christian Persuasion by Oz Guinness. And by the way, for those of you who are wondering the name, yes, he's from that same family who makes the famous beer. Um, side, quick sidebar, drinking in and of itself is not bad. Getting drunk, though, that's a different discussion. Just my own personal beliefs, but that's just a quick aside um, because of the name of the author and whatnot. But again, as with every book review I do, I tell people, as I'm going to say in this one, think critically Think independently. Think objectively. These are things that are important if we're going to grow our minds, expand our thinking, and continue to learn. And also to keep humble and realize how much we still have to learn and how far we still have to go. This is Bobby G. Bobby's Book Review. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the not-too-distant future. Peace.